So 2022 marks the 150th anniversary of Under Greenwood Tree, perhaps Hardy's most light-hearted novel, but one with hidden depths uh, that become evident upon each rereading. Its humorous depiction of life in an early Victorian rural community seems to place it within Hardy's novels of character and environment, and our amazing keynote lecture will be talking about just that. On the surface, it concerns the trials and tribulations of the Melstock Choir, based on the choir of which Hardy's own father and grandfather were members, and the machinations of Fancy Day, the New Village School mistress and her trio of suitors. And in case anybody hasn't heard yet, we now own Hardy's grandfather's cello, and it is now at our office. It is Owls. So when we open to the public, you are all welcome to come and have a look. So, uh, it is interwoven with folklore and folk song, and underneath can be seen a repudiation of the eugenicist theories espoused by his contemporaries such as Grant Allen and Francis Galton. Biological and social harmony undergird the novel, which best encapsulates Hardy's notion of loving kindness. And Angelique Richardson, of course, has written extensively on that. Gender relations, rurality versus urbanity, evolutionary theory, music and folklore are all present in this novel, which, just as later in Far From the Madding Crowd, the rustic chorus are essential. The subtitle of the novel is a rural painting of the Dutch school, and this novel is indeed a painting in words, vivid in its depiction of both scenery and characters. We are very lucky today to have as our keynote lecturer Professor Simon Gattrell, who is the editor of both the Oxford World's Classics edition and the new scholarly Cambridge edition of the novel. Professor Angelique Richardson will be speaking to us on Hardy and the New Science. Dr. Peter Robson will look at the Melstock Choir and their manifestation in other Hardy novels. And we will once again have the pleasure of the new Hardy players performing for us. Our Call for Papers panel will be addressing social character and social change, the country cottage, eco-critical themes in the novel, and a comparison between Parson Maybold and Parson Shirley from Charlotte Bronte's novel, which sounds utterly intriguing. During the breaks, please visit our merchandise table, ably handled by our amazing D toll-free down the back there, because we do have new goodies. We have new postcards and we also have Richard Franklin's book, Hardy and Religion, copies available down the back, along with Tony Fincham's Exploring Wessex as well. Uh, Peter Tate is here. As usual, thank you, lovely Peter, for coming again. Your support, as always, is invaluable. And he also has brought his book along, Hardy and Women. There will be a wine reception at the conclusion of the day, which you are all welcome to stay for. And uh, for those of you who have booked a place or who wish to book a place, seven o'clock we're heading to Lee Garden Chinese Restaurant, which is down the road on this street, down that way, for those of you who haven't been here before. It's on this side of the road as well. Um, so, uh, there will be a walk taking place tomorrow to Lower Bockhampton, which will be led by Blue Badge Guide Derek Pride. It will leave from the town pump at 10 a.m. Uh, his mother was a schoolmistress at Lower Bockhampton during Hardy's time, uh, just like Fancy Day's character. And there's also our birthday weekend at the beginning of June, which I hope um, to see many of you at. There's our conference in July, a whole week this time, uh, which has loads of stuff packed in. Hope to see you all there again. And something brand new for you all, Hardy and Gothic Wessex will be taking place over a weekend in October. Halloween, obviously. 
So please do come along to that. It will be up on the website shortly because people don't realise how many links to the Gothic Wessex has. Robert Louis Stevenson, the Shelleys. I won't go into a whole list here, but please do look out for that. It's a whole weekend conference with a coach trip to Bournemouth as well. So before I begin, I would like to express thanks on behalf of the Thomas Hardy Society to Ian and Colin Nicholl. Ian Nicholl is here today with his lovely wife. We're delighted to be able to thank Ian and his brother Colin for their generous donation of three letters from Florence Dugdale, the second Mrs Hardy, to their grandfather Harold Barlow, and one letter from uh, his daughter, who is their aunt, Josephine Barlow, to Florence, written when she was a young girl, sadly too late for Florence to receive. We would also like to thank their wives, Bridget Nicholl and Sue Nicholl, and for helping them sort through Josephine's papers after she died in 2014, a hundred years after Florence first wrote to her father. Thank you very, very much to Ian and Colin Nicholl and their fantastic wives, and Angelique is currently having them digitised as we speak at Exeter University. So, without further ado, 